morning lads and lasses you might know me for doing a lot of honda monkey stuff but because the weather's getting nicer we're going to concentrate today on my ducati so we've got my ducati in at the moment in shipley and bradford for its service and we're just about to go pick it all up so it's ready for the summer and we can get out on a lot of adventures but i just thought i'd show you how i transport it there and how i get it back and hopefully we'll have a ride out this afternoon as well so first of all i want to show you my trailer this is my armitage motorcycle trailer i think they're ba uh, made in wakefield but I found this one on Facebook Marketplace for about 700 quid, which is an absolute steal to say they go for over 2,000 brand new. But the idea is it comes with a lot of accessories. I went back at van at the moment because I uh, took it all off when it was chucking down the other week and just threw them in there because I thought I couldn't be bothered putting it back together. But the idea is there's a ramp that comes down here and then you bring your motorcycle up. On this pole here, there's a little um, seat hook that drops down and holds your bike in place. And then you basically just ratchet strap it in to these kind of points here. And it's right solid little thing. It's tiny as well, so it's easily like manoeuvrable. But uh, I'll show you more once we get to Bradford. So I'm just at the Ducati shop in um, Shipley, Bradford, and I've just picked up my scrambler. I've just put it on the trailer. I'm not going to show you how it's going to go on today because it's, it's a right fab. But uh, yeah, here it is. And here we go. This is how it loads onto the actual trailer itself. As you can see, there's a hook that comes down over its shoulder that just keeps it there. To be honest, it stands up quite firmly just with that on. That's tightened. And all you do is basically give it a good adjust there, which we could do with just double tighten it. I've just had a lap around the car park to make sure it's all safe. Yeah, you've got your ratchet straps on either side. The, um, I am very paranoid about this, so I'll be stopping a couple of times on the way home just to double check that they haven't come loose because they do have a habit. But what I've done is I've just put them as tight as I possibly can, so I just don't get any give. I held on to the bike pretty well, but then this side I'll need adjusting now, most likely. Just one, but yeah, there. The main worry is the hooks that come off. As you can see, the hooks on this side, but that's pretty solid. It's speed bumps you've got to worry about mostly. Now coming back to my house, there's quite a bit of uh, bumps to go across. We are in West Yorkshire at the end of the day and we are exceptionally underfunded. But yeah, that's, uh, that's my Ducati Scrambler and uh, I'll see you when I get home. Just got her home. Just about to take her off the rack now. Straps held up really well. The secret is just to get them as tight as possible. This um, seat holder does a good job of not moving her around or anything. But yeah, absolutely fantastic trailer this. Solid, I did stop off a couple of times. I only had to adjust one strap by one click, but let's get her off. Here's the ramp that comes with it as well. So here she is, sports fans. This is my 2017 Roland Sands design Ducati Scrambler. It's the uh, 803cc model. I don't know why they just don't run it down to 800, but for me it's in a different category. It has 74 brake horsepower. So when I was looking for my first motorcycle, which this one is, I was looking, you know, your generic MT-07s, which you trade on and stuff like that. But I just didn't like the look of them as such. I like things that are quite unique. And this, as soon as I saw it come up, I had to buy it. Um, I think there was about five of these imported into the UK. I could be wrong. That's what I was told by somebody uh, at Ducati and you never know, you can't trust them these days. But yeah, this is my bike. Up close and personal, we've got the um, shotgun twin exhaust here. This, I'm not sure if it was an afterthought on the actual bike itself. Because um, a lot of the, I've seen maybe two other of these Roland Sands designed bikes and mine is the only one that has this exhaust on it. But it does sound fantastic and you'll hear it shortly. It's got this absolutely fantastic paintwork. Just reminds me a bit of a caramel ice cream sundae really. And it does turn heads wherever I go. I just had someone shouting at me in Bradford earlier saying what bike site is fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's a Scrambler Ducati. It says on the actual label. It's got a really nice seat. You can fit a pillion on it. Absolutely fantastic. And um, the display is quite simple. Excuse me, compost bins. We're ecologically here. So this is it firing up. It's in neutral now. We just press the button. Just had its service, so it hasn't been fired up recently.
for a spin then. Um, just so that you fashionistas out there know what we're on with today, we're wearing the RST wax jacket. Um, I think it's called the Brixton. We've got classic pretty green limited edition urban camouflage. We've got the road skin jeans, absolutely fantastic. These are from all the pads on the hips and the knees. We've got some really boring generic for keep the shoe high tops there. So we're all good to go. We've got our Bell qualifier um, helmet and uh, yeah, let's get out on the road. But for the first time this year on the Ducati Scrambler, you might be able to see in the background here that there's Emily Moore Mast, one of Huddersfield's finer um, monuments, and it's the free, the, I think it's the largest freestanding structure in all of Europe. Well, it was at one point, don't hold me to that. I was going to take you right up to it because we're only about 10 minutes away from where I live, and uh, sadly they've closed the road off, so we're going to have to go the long way around. But the roads aren't too bad even going this way so if you look to your left now we'll pan that way you'll see the beautiful emily moor it's not quite like a moor you normally see full of heather and everything but that structure is supposed to broadcast tv i think all the way across to the east coast it's quite um important really we're getting a little bit of fogging up again I'm gonna to have to get myself a pin lock because this helmet just doesn't seem to like it in the winter if you saw my other video um, of the Dragon Rally the other week you'd see that I had a bit of a nightmare when it was snowy on the ground but yeah look at that view it's a bit grim up north they say um, I don't think it's too bad So I've just stopped for a moment just to show you that Emily Moore mast there. We're going to have a ride up to there now. And because uh, it is a nice road, it's quite fast flowing as well. I tell you what, it is nice to be back on this bike. Look at this, let's give it some beans. I love my uh, Honda Monkey, it's a great little adventure bike, but there's just something about these bigger bikes, and there's a reason why I chose this one as my uh, first bike. So when I first started training, I wasn't at the best school to be honest, they, uh, they were a bit cheap, it was old school biker types, basically you're going to get on a bike and you can already know what to do, and if you've never ridden a bike before, if you don't know how to put it into neutral, if you don't know how to use the gears, it's quite daunting and the whole point of a CVT for example is to teach you how to ride a bike. I just wasn't getting that with them. But I tried to persevere, um, they gave us the worst, oldest 1980 Suzuki bikes to train on and uh, quite, yeah, they were just absolutely knackered. There's only more there. So I didn't last long with them, I got to my first Mod 1 and I failed because they, they were using um, Kawasaki Z650s which are, to be honest, a very very good bike. The only trouble with the Kawasaki Z650s that they were giving us were they had about 30,000 miles on clock, they'd been used primarily as trainer bikes, so you can understand that they were absolutely knackered, they were torn to bits, had been dropped and everything. So. That kind of put me off on, on the Kawasaki. I probably would have one though, there's no hate towards them. Um, as long as it will probably maintain, I'd have one. But then I changed school and I went to A1 in Gateshead. And uh, me being from Yorkshire, it was quite a trek to get up there, but they are one of the best schools in the UK. Plus, my wife is from the Newcastle area. So we were, I had somewhere to stay, I stayed with, her, with my father in law. And I went to A1 biking, and honestly, they were absolutely fantastic. Um, Richard and Chris, I think they're called, who, who trained me up, did an absolutely fantastic job. Passed me mod one, zero minors. Um, passed me mod two, I think, with three minors. And it was all done in about a month. And I did go intensively with them. I did, I think, I did about 14 hours altogether in training. But well, it was well worth the money, and I highly recommend A1 in Gateshead. Honestly, just try them if you're up that way. Don't mess around. They also have very nice. MT 07s and they were brand new the ones that I was training on and that's where I thought oh I might want an MT 07 because they were, they were absolutely perfect to, to learn on there's no um, stalling they're so forgiving they're nice and easy to move around they're nimble they're light enough 
they pretty much the, the best first bike I could have possibly wanted to uh, to go on but as much as I did like the MTR 7s I thought they were quite generic and I thought well I could do with uh, something a bit more unique like myself so I just started hunting around I did like the scrambler types of bikes I thought well it's best of both worlds a bit of off-roading a bit of on-roading um, you know I can I'm not, it's, I can I can have a go at everything basically and I highly recommend the Scrambler as your first bike like I say and this one has 800 cc's of um, 803 to be specific and engine size and it also has 74 brake horsepower so it does keep up with the MT-07 the only trouble is with a lot of the Ducati Scramblers I find they have a bit of a garish kind of colour scheme about them unless you get the um, are they called night shift version ones they're really nice and as much as this is exactly the same as them, apart from a few little tweaked extras and the paint job, um, this one just came up on eBay and it's the Roland Sanders Design Limited Edition uh, Ducati Scrambler from 2017. I have spoken to Ducati and they say that about five of them were imported into uh, the UK but I can't see that being correct. I'm sure there must have been a lot more. So maybe let's say there's ten at least. But this one I bought off a lad in Milton Keynes. He um, he just he was a reseller of a bike reseller, and he just picked up off a lady who bought it. She'd done only 2,000 miles on it, perfect conditions, not a single drop of rain it had seen, and uh, yeah, I just fell in love with the paint job straight away because it's just it's just a classic, just retro vibes, just what I'm into. And I was uh, riding my well driving back from. Bradford earlier and I had my trailer and my bike on it and there was a lad that pulled up in a, a nice Honda Civic screaming at me out the window I thought he was going to say oh one of his straps has come undone and my bike was falling off and he was just screaming wow mate what is that bike I told him it was a Ducati Scrambler and he was just you know he just couldn't believe it he goes that's a Ducati I said yeah that's a Ducati and here it is and uh, yeah he said it was fantastic he loved it so that, that made my day really but I don't buy bikes for other people I buy bikes for myself because I want something that I can love and cherish and enjoy and this is one of them bikes so we'll go down this country road here and hopefully we won't count too many tractors today they've been spreading bike smells of it but this is the perfect first bike if you're after one it's got a lot of acceleration in it I think you call that torque maybe by go from whoa, straight out you see like that yeah it handles so well around corners I'm just going to let some fog out of my visor, get a bit higher. It's just so forgiving as well on the gears. You don't need, I think I very rarely get it into its thickest gear. Especially on these roads, I generally stick around three and four, just offering between them two. But like now, I mean, uh, it doesn't, that's one of the problems with this bike. It doesn't tell you what gear you're in. And when you're first starting out, you kind of want to know that information. It's not a problem now because once you're you know adjusted to riding motorcycles it's easy enough to find out where your gears are but on this that's one thing i would like you can buy an aftermarket gauge and they're quite easy to wire in to be honest but i don't like to i've already cluttered up my monkey bike with loads of gaz gadgets on the front so um i don't fancy doing it with this but let's give it a bit of a Look at that, just the power and now it's just riding along, no accelerator and it's just got that most beautiful sound, that shotgun exhaust, wow, that made me fall in love with it mostly as well because I've, I've seen a couple, like I said, other Roland Sands designs ones, I look every every week, I've got them saved on eBay, not very rarely, very rarely they come up, but I've not seen one with this shotgun exhaust, but it's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, well done Roland Sands. If you're not following him on Instagram, do. He's got very big, I thought he was kind of like a small budget bloody uh, designer at the time, but he seems to do a lot. He seems to make quite a lot of stuff out of there. And do you know what, I, quite, I like pretty much all of his stuff. I do like most of his stuff. So now we are in um, Sissit. And we're gonna head through Sissit, through to Clayton West, and then over to um, Denbydale and then going to head back home. Give them a nod. So 
So to the right there on the hill, if you can see it, um, that is Castle Hill. And we've got Victoria Tower on top of it. The hill itself is the uh, Iron Age Fort. I think it goes back to the Stone Age quite like, most likely as well. And obviously you can see where they dug out the, when you get to the top of it, that is, you can see where they dug out all the moats and stuff. And they had the palisade walls, which used basically your big spikes, the big timber logs that have got a spike on the top, and they'd put them on so they couldn't be attacked. But it has been quite a good defensive point for a while, so there'll be a lot of stuff around here for that. Uh, the Victoria Tower was built to commemorate Queen Victoria's, um, I think, coronation, coronation to the throne, I think you call it, yeah, coronation. So that is Castle. It's, uh, these are just some really nice roads around here. So if you ever up my way, or you're passing through, that's what I feel that is. It is uh, yeah, I hope you find some of these nice landmarks on your journeys. The terrain up here is very hilly, so you are going up and down, and if you're not very good with hill starts, I suggest you practice them. But I have actually had such a little blast zooming around these hills this afternoon, and I can't stop smiling. Just everything about these, this motorcycle makes me smile. There's another view of Castle over here. But absolutely everything makes me smile like this motorcycle. When I saw it, I thought I'm having it, and it's my first motorcycle, and do you know what, I don't think I'll sell it. I thought, oh, I could go get one of them uh, Ducati Multistrads this morning, the V4s, look fantastic. I do like the uh, Africa Twin by Honda. I do like Honda motorcycles as well. And uh, I don't know if I'll, I'll ever trade this in for one though. I might just have to buy a third motorcycle, might not. I think that's going to be the solution, I think. I think I'm just going to have to buy a third motorcycle that I can then enjoy, sell, and just get another one. Just part exchange it every year. And every summer I'll just have a different motorcycle. I did look at the uh, CCM Spitfires as well. They are absolutely phenomenal bike. It's a single cylinder engine, I think it's a 900cc. But if you've not checked out the CCM, that thing, but it's a totally different style. They're more of your bobber type bikes. And I did, I did like it though. Uh, I have to go over, I think they're based in Bolton. I have planned to go over there this summer and I'm going to go have a test ride on one of them. That might be the third motorcycle, you never know, that could be the third motorcycle that I buy. So we've just made it back home now. There she is, sports fans. The lovely uh, Roland Sands Ducati uh, that we've been riding this afternoon. And uh, yeah, I've just got the, the biggest smile going on my face. I've had serious withdrawal symptoms from not being able to ride this since November. Uh, I would like to take it out more, but obviously once the salt gets on the road and everything, I'd rather just stick to the, the Honda Monkey because I don't mind if that gets a bit trashed. This, however, is my, my little pride and joy. Um, yeah, happy days. So hope you have a good weekend. We're going to give it a wash in a couple of days once I find some time in my schedule. It does need one, especially after transport it on the trailer um, the other week to take it to the Takati in Shipley and then bring it back today. So there is quite a bit of dirt on it. I do want to treat it to a bit of a bath. So um, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching and uh, have an awesome weekend.